Uh, so our uh, first speaker is Nadezhda Bonarnova, and uh, yeah, she'll tell about her work on uh, approximate polynomials. Yep. Approximating polynomials. Yep. Uh, okay, I'm still not quite sure if I should be the one to. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Control L typically does the job, I think. But also, there is a Zoom meeting, and I think that, this that should be. That might not work. Yeah, this should also be shared with. I, I don't know. Like. <laughs> is it okay? The, um, oh, wait, I think they are doing it. Okay. So I guess we're good to go. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you all for showing up on Friday at 9 a.m. I'm going to talk about approximate degree lower bounds for Oracle identification problems, and this talk is based on joint work with Mark Bunn. Nope. <laughs> the laser pointer is working. Okay, one sec, ah, I know, I know what's happening. Sorry. Um, nope. Okay. The clicker is still not working. Um, so yeah, the, okay. Uh, the first model that I'm going to start with is Introducing the query model. In the query model, we have an algorithm that has Oracle black box access to unknown input string x. And the goal of the algorithm is to output a known function f of x while minimizing the number of queries it makes to the Oracle. And by query, I just mean read one bit from the input. Uh, if the function is Boolean, we are also going to say that the algorithm should accept the input if the value of the function is one and should reject the input if the value of the function is zero. Uh, we like to consider this kind of model because first, it strips away implementation details, so you only focus on what parts of the input are essential to read in order to evaluate the function. And another reason is because this is one of the few models where we can prove unconditional lower bounds. And for example, this is the model where we can prove Grover's advantage. Uh, there are several ways to define query model, and I'm going to walk you through while using an example. Let's say that the function that we need to evaluate is function or. So we need to output one if and only if there's at least one one in the input. The first model is the deterministic query model. In that model, algorithm has no additional resources and has to output the correct value of the function without any error for all inputs. It's easy to see that worst case scenario, the algorithm has to read the whole input in order to evaluate the function correctly. So computing OR in that model requires uh, omega of n queries. The next model is randomized model, randomized query model. In that model, the algorithm has access to unbiased random bits and has to output the correct value of the function for all inputs with success probability at least two thirds over the internal randomness. And one can show that in this model, we still have to read omega of n uh, bits of the input, make omega of n queries in order to evaluate OR. And the last one is quantum query model. In that model, the algorithm is allowed to query the oracle in superposition, and it again has to output the correct value with success probability at least two thirds for all inputs. And here, by Grover's search, uh, one can do this in all square root of n queries, and this bound is tight. And the last thing that we're going to talk in this model is bounded versus unbounded error regime. So in the bounded error, the success probability is supposed to be two thirds. In that bounded error regime, 
we want the algorithm to output the correct value with success probability that is better than random guessing. So it's like if it's just a Boolean function, probability better than one half. Another model that we're going to look at is approximation by polynomials. So let's say that we have a Boolean function that's defined on a subset of a Boolean hypercube. We're going to say that a real valid polynomial P is epsilon approximation to that function F if P is uh, bounded on the whole hypercube and is epsilon close to the value of the function on the domain of the function. And we say that appro epsilon approximate degree of F is the least degree of a polynomial that epsilon approximates F. By default, you should think that epsilon is one third, and this is analogous to the bounded error uh, query model that I talked about earlier. There are a lot of different applications for approximate degree throughout theoretical computer science, but in this talk, since it's TQC, I'm going to focus on just one, quantum query complexity. So, how are these models related? There is a fact that acceptance probability of a randomized T query algorithm is just outside, out of the box a polynomial of degree T. So the approximate degree of a function is always at most its randomized query complexity. We can say something very similar for quantum query complexity. So the acceptance probability of a quantum T query algorithm is a polynomial of degree 2T. So the approximate degree of a function is always at most one half of quantum query complexity, which means if we prove lower bounds for approximate degree, we prove lower bounds for quantum query complexity as well. There are several advantages of this kind of way proving, of proving lower bounds for quantum query complexity. First, this method is robust. It can lead to quantum communication. It can yield lower bounds against different regimes of error. Uh, and we actually use this in order to prove our results for unbounded error regime. And it gives uh, tri time space trade offs. And it also could be a little bit more transparent than some other methods in identifying the hardness. So, first, since the polynomial method has to work with the decision versions of the problem because it's designed for the Boolean functions. Uh, it's going to give the lower bounds for the decision version of the problem instead of the search version of the problem. And sometimes it could be more intuitive than some other methods. And just a couple of words about other methods. The most well known and well used are adversary methods to prove lower bounds for quantum query complexity. Uh, there is a positive weights method that is easy to apply but is kind of limited in power. And there is a negative weights method that gives tight characterization of quantum query complexity, but it's pretty difficult to apply. In this work, we consider approximate degree and quantum query complexity of two problems. The first one, in the first one, uh, in the ordered search, the input is a binary string. It starts with a bunch of zeros, then is followed by a bunch of ones. And the goal is to find the location where the string splits. The most trivial way to solve this is through binary search, and this problem was actually introduced as an abstraction of binary search. The second problem is hidden string. In that problem, the input is a collection of bits, each bit by, marked by a binary string. And this bit is going to be one if and only if that binary string that marks the bit is present uh, in the hidden x as a substring. And in both of the uh, problems, the goal is to output x. The second problem is a little bit easier to see in the following model. Let's say that we have an algorithm. It has query access to the input. Its goal is to figure out, to identify what kind of hidden string is there in the oracle. and it's allowed to send its guesses for the substrings, and the oracle is just going to output one if that string is present in X. Um, ordered search could also be fitted into this template. So now the algorithm again has oracle access to the input X. Its goal is to figure out what the X is, and it sends its guesses to the oracle and the oracle is going to output one if and only if the guess is greater 
than the actual string. And we're going to define this specific function as greater than sub i of x. And we're going to use this a little bit later during the talk. And in general, we can generalize this kind of problems in the following way. We have an algorithm, Oracle access to the input. The goal is to figure out what the uh, hidden string is. And the algorithm is allowed to make queries from a fixed set of queries. And each time it makes a query, the Oracle is going to evaluate the corresponding function on the Oracle, or on the hidden string, and then it's going to send the result to the algorithm. These kind of problems are called Oracle identification problems, and we mentioned this in the title, and that's the main reason why I'm talking about this right now. Um, and the last thing is, since we are going to work with polynomial method, we have to work with Boolean functions. And because of this, instead of uh, having an output to be the whole n bit string, we're going to say that the output is the parity of x or XOR of all bits. Now, let's go a little bit through the overview of the state of the art for these problems. So, for the upper bounds, just a binary, trivial, binary, trivial binary search yields of n where the input length is two to the n. Um, and this also yields lower, sorry, upper bounds for the approximate degree. For the quantum query complexity of the reconstruction version of the problem, when you have to output the whole input, uh, there was a really beautiful line of work that has shown that we cannot do better on quantum computer. Um, for the approximate degree, the best lower bound that we had uh, was square root of n. And that's it. And as well as for the quantum query complexity of decision version of this problem. Uh, for the hidden string, there are of n uh, randomized and quantum algorithms, and they yield an upper bound for the approximate degree as well. There are no lower bounds on the approximate degree or the decision version of hidden string. And there is a lower bound for the reconstruction, quantum query complexity of the reconstruction version of hidden string, which is n over log squared of n. In this work, we show a lower bound on approximate degree and quantum query complexity for the decision versions of ordered search and hidden string that is almost tight. And we also recover the previous state of the art for the reconstruction version of quantum query complexity of the hidden string. We also consider all of these problems in the unbounded error setting. And as a reminder, in this setting, we just want the algorithm to output the correct value with, in case of the uh, decision version, one half plus some small gamma. And uh, in the reconstruction, it's better than random guessing, so it's like one over two to the n plus some very small gamma. And we show the same dependence, the same lower bounds with the same dependency on the parameter n and the tie dependency on the error parameter for the approximate degree and quantum query complexity of decision versions of order search and hidden string. We significantly improve the um, dependency on the error parameter for the quantum query complexity of uh, reconstruction of hidden string. And for the ordered search, apparently this was already shown in one of the previous works. Something that we want to emphasize is that all of these results in this work were achieved using the same framework, using the same technique. And something, to give you a glimpse of this framework, we're going to only focus on um, understanding approximate degree of ordered search uh, for the bounded error setting. Just a reminder, ordered search is an abstraction of binary search. The input starts with zeros and ends with ones. The goal is to find the parity of the location where the string splits. To start, we're going to overview the uh, argument by Berman and DeWolfs, who have shown the lower bound of square root of n for the approximate degree. By the definition of ordered search, Ordered search composed with a bunch of functions greater than each implied, uh, sorry, each applied to uh, the hidden string x is going to be the same as computing parity of x. 
This is just how we defined ordered search. Let's say that there is a polynomial that approximates ordered search and has degree D. Uh, the authors have shown that each of the greater thans could be approximated by a polynomial of degree of square root of n, and this is just by an analog of Grover's search. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot compose right now p's and q's in order to approximate parity, and this is something that we want to do, because the polynomials for greater than are given, they are outputting real, value, real values that are close to the correct ones, and p is expecting the Boolean values to be valid. But using, for example, Shestov's argument that allows uh, any polynomial to be made robust to constant noise in the input without blow up in the degree, we can say that P can work with the values that are close to the correct values, Boolean values, but is not necessarily Boolean. And then we can compose P with a family of Qs and get a polynomial that approximates parity and has degree D square root of N. And the last piece of the puzzle is that any polynomial that approximates parity is required to degree to have the full degree uh, omega of n. So d cannot be better than square root of n. Unfortunately, we cannot use the same uh, exact argument to get a better lower bound for the, for the ordered search because lower bounds, sorry, upper bound and the lower bound in claims one and two are tight. So we cannot do better. But what if we can somehow enrich x in all of these places with some additional information that is going to dramatically decrease the approximate degree of greater than, and the parity will still remain kind of hard even with this additional information. So we were able to find this magical way to enrich the uh, input x such that the following argument holds. So we're going to denote x with this additional information as y of x. And <clears throat> we first, again, assume that there is a polynomial of degree d that approximates order search. We show that each of the greater thans now can be approximated by a polynomial of just degree of log n. We use, again, Shestov's argument to combine the two to get a polynomial that approximates parity and has degree d log n. And we show that with this additional information, approximating parity remains almost as hard. So it requires degree n over log n. And so the ordered search also requires degree n over log squared of n. And moreover, we do not explicitly construct y uh, of x. We use a probabilistic method and we construct a distribution of such y's of x uh, that each of the claims one and two hold with high probability and we show that both of them simultaneously hold with non-zero probability. So there is an oracle that's going to work for us. And now I will try to give you a glimpse of what kind of structure can give us this power. So the main idea that we take is from randomized communication results. <clears throat> In this model, there are two parties, Alice and Bob. Each has their own input, and they have to output the value of the function evaluated on both of the inputs while minimizing the amount of communication they make with each other. Uh, there was this nice result by Nissan that if Alice has X and Bob has I, there is an off log n uh, bits randomized communication protocol for the greater than, greater than sub i of x. The main idea is just binary search for the most significant bit where both of them differ, and it heavily takes advantage of the inner products between the inputs and mod two, between the inputs and some random strings. We define y of i and x to contain all of the information needed to simulate Bob's view of the protocol, and it's going to have a bunch of X, uh, inner products of X and some random strings of specific structure. Then for each I, we design an algorithm that simulates Bob's view and uh, out computes greater than with high probability. And we convert 
this family of alkenes into the family of polynomials that's going to satisfy claim one. Now to the lower bound. So we still need to show that the parity will remain hard even with this additional information. So we switch from considering polynomials over zeros and ones to minus ones and ones without any blow up in the degree. Um, we use the fact that all monomials of degree less than n are orthogonal to parity in minus one one basis. So in order to approximate parity, you have to have the monomial that uh, the parity itself in clear in the polynomial. And we show that with all of these random parities, if you try to combine uh, less than n over log n of them together, you're not going to get uh, a monomial of degree n with very, very high probability over the choice of the oracle. And that's all that I'm going to say about the ideas for the proof. The nice thing about this proof is first, it generalizes to any y of r and x with a good structure, which allows us to reuse this technique for other problems. And it also works for approximation to any error, not necessarily one third. So this allows us to prove lower bounds for unbounded error setting. Putting everything together, we kind of have shown claims one and two. We have shown that greater thans have low degree, parity still has high degree, so we get that ordered search requires degree n over log squared of n. And this is the last slide. To summarize our work, we give new and almost tight lower bounds for approximate degree of ordered search. We generalize this to unbounded error regime with the tight dependency on the error parameter. We show the same lower bounds for hidden string using the same approach. And all of these lower bounds also imply lower bounds on quantum query complexity for both decision and reconstruction versions of the problem. And in general, we introduce uh, a new framework for lower bounds on oracle identification problems. And a couple of open problems that I want to highlight is, so is it, first one is, is it possible to use the easiness of one problem in the presence of additional information to prove the hardness of, an, of another, as we did here, in some other way. Uh, another problem uh, is, is it possible to use this framework for other open problems or in other settings? And the last one is to close the small gap that it still exists for uh, approximate degree and quantum query complexity of the decision versions of ordered search and hidden string. And that's it, thank you for listening. Thank you, Najesha, for a uh, nice talk. Uh, do we have any questions? Thanks for the talk. So have you thought uh, about the upper bound on the degree? Uh, sorry, the upper oh. bound on the degree? Yes. Uh, we try to think about this, but it seems like the upper bound, at least for the ordered search, should, like, we believe that uh, the actual, we, we should move the lower bound closer, uh -huh. just because a lot of the time, not all of the time, but a lot of the time, quantum query complexity and the approximate degree match, and we believe that's also the case in that scenario, but... Also, it's kind of hard to think what kind of stuff you can do that is easier than binary search. Okay, so you have uh, no intuition of what can be a good approximating polynomial? Sorry? Do you know like any approximating polynomial that has degree less than n? Or like, like have for, you for the ordered search, there is no, okay. at least like to my knowledge. Okay, thanks. I, I had uh, I have one question uh, that I wanted to ask. Um, so, this last thing that you are um, like you have parity that you apply at the yeah. end. Could you use any uh, any 
for example, well, two questions. One is, can you use, for example, majority, which is also the com query complexity is n, or can you use any query problem whose complexity is n? So, right now, we are not using that. We tried and we're not able to do this with majority, even though we really want to, because majority is also monotone, and a lot of the problems that we are interested in are monotone, and with parity since like it's inherently very non-monotone. It's like it's kind of hard to prove lower bounds against monotone uh, problems using this framework. But yeah, this framework was specifically constructed for the parity. We are trying to adjust it for other functions that have like the full complexity, but we have not succeeded yet. Thank you. Um, any other questions? I'll have a, another one. Sure. Uh, um, let me just quickly recall what it was. Uh, well, um, I mean, one of the questions was that, uh, for example, what if, um, I mean, you, you have this like framework that you, the more general framework. Yeah. Um, can you prove some results just concerning this more general framework and, um, you know, um, not specific problems, but just like stay, say something. Uh, I, I don't know, it's not like a very specific question. But. It's like, so the, in some way we do, but just for the lower parts. So the lower bound for parity is actually very, very general. So uh, if like, it mostly states that you have, if you have a bunch of inner products of the input with some random strings, and we don't really care about the structure of these random strings. It could have like a bunch of random bits, almost non-random bits, it doesn't really matter. Unless it's like super polynomial, we're still going to get n over log n. So the lower bound itself is very, very general. But the question here is more about constructing upper bound and constructing the specific oracle that's going to be useful for this specific uh, like function for the upper bound. And there, the things can get a little bit tricky. So that's the point where you can actually, actually need to go full in and figure out all of the details. So it's like it, half of it is very general, another one is not. I actually remember also my, thanks, I also remember that my original question was that it's, it's not concern, I mean, it's not uh, your work, but like the upper bounds for, uh, if you wanna like identify st string X by just querying its substrings, it's not even clear to me that N upper bound, uh, if you just queried elements of the string, then it's clear that N is the upper bound, but if you only yeah. can ask questions, is something a substring of this? You can actually do something very similar to just like querying bit by bit. So you start with like, hey, do you have a zero inside? If there is no zeros, then you're done. If there is a zero, you can just start adding bit by bit. And if it's going to say yes, then like you, you just add one more bit to the right. If it says no, then you know what is the bit to the right. There's like one tricky thing about like the string just ending there, but it's like it's kind of easy to walk around. Okay, uh, got the idea. Um, any other questions? Well, if not, uh, let's thank Nadezhda again. Thank you. Um,